This week, we're gonna talk about how to get started on the adventure that is 3D printing your own miniatures. Hey adventurers, welcome back to another episode of Short Rest Studios. This week, I'm gonna give you five easy steps to get started 3D printing your own miniatures. And you wanna hang around at the end because there is a bonus step that I think will help you out. As you know, I like to 3D print my own miniatures. It is an involved process. There are a lot of things to consider, but it's really not that hard once you get started, get the right equipment and get things dialed in the right way. So I wanna help you get started 3D printing your own miniatures. It is a lot of fun and it adds a whole other level to your tabletop gameplay. So let's dig right in with step number one, the obvious one, get a printer. There are so many 3D printers out there on the market. You can spend as much money as you want to spend, but it's always a risky proposition to go out and spend a bunch of money on a piece of equipment for a hobby that you don't know if you're going to stick with or not, right? It's really daunting to pick a printer. So let me kind of give you the quick rundown. There are two basic types of 3D printer. There's filament, which melts plastic filament and forms layers out of that, basically draws the shape of each layer over and over again until it builds a complete 3D object. Then there's resin printing, which uses a liquid UV resin to do the same thing. There's a LCD screen that sits under the vat that the resin is in, and that vat, of course, has a clear film as its base. And that LCD screen projects UV light that hardens each layer of resin to then, over time, build a complete 3D object. Generally speaking, you're gonna get better detail with a resin printer than with a filament printer. You can get, I mean, there are people out there who dial in their filament printers and get some pretty nice detail and print miniatures with them. It can be done. But if you want to save yourself some heartache and if you're not super technical, which I'm a little bit technical, but I'm not super technical, you probably wanna go with resin. And then once you've chosen resin or filament, there are still a million different choices. And I tell you two things that will make you feel better. Budget is fine when you're just starting out. It's true that sometimes if you spend more money, the machine might actually be easier to use. But I have a budget printer and I've never had any issues with it. And a small printer is fine for printing minis just starting out. Now you are limited if you get a smaller printer on the size of the miniatures that you can print. I mean, some of these giant pieces that Loot Studios puts out, I can't print because I have a smaller printer. But for printing just regular tabletop miniatures, a small printer is great. I have the Creality Hallet One, and I'll put a link to that on Amazon in the description below. I think it's a great little printer. It serves my purposes really well. No, I can't print some of the larger things, but I can get some great detail once I dial everything in on some really nice tabletop miniatures. So I recommend it to you. Step number two, basic safety. Resin is toxic. Before you even open the box on that printer, you wanna make sure that you have some safety paraphernalia at hand. You want some eyewear because if resin splashes into your eyes, that can cause a problem. You want nitrile gloves, and I'll put a link to some of these things in the description down below because touching resin can cause problems down the road. A little bit on your hands once in a long while is probably not gonna cause you any trouble, but over time it can begin to cause health problems and you want to avoid that if at all possible. You also wanna be concerned about ventilation. If you're gonna be running that printer in a space that people are gonna be in, you wanna make sure you can pump those toxic fumes out the window where they will disperse and not be a problem for anyone. Check out the card up above where I show you how to install ventilation in an existing 3D printer enclosure, but I'll also put a link in the description to an enclosure with a built-in fan that may be useful for you. Step number three, now you've got your printer and you've got your safety materials, you wanna calibrate the machine. And I know you wanna just jump right in and start printing. Frankly, that's what I did. I just jumped in and started printing and I got some decent results, but I had a lot of failures too. The thing that saved me was this. I went and found a calibration test that's great for printing miniatures. It's called the Cones of Calibration. It's really simple to use. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description, but here's how it works. There are two sides. One side is the failure side, one side is the success side. And essentially you wanna get your exposure dialed in so that the success side is as perfect as you can get it. And the failure side is not. 
It's really easy to read, it's really straightforward, and I dialed mine in and got some great results after that, and I continue to get great results all the time. I run the calibration test again every once in a while just to make sure my exposure settings are still working for me, but I haven't had anything that came out badly since then. Step number four in getting started printing 3D minis, get the right resin. I struggled with this. I just went and bought some standard resin because it's almost as bad as trying to find a 3D printer. There are so many different types of resin out there. But I'll tell you this, don't do standard resin for miniatures. I would go for your first miniatures with ABS-like resin. It's still pretty inexpensive and it has a bit more flexibility in the finished product so that you know things like swords and pointy pieces that stick off of your minis don't just snap off very easily which they will have a tendency to do if you use standard resin because it's more brittle. When you become more of an expert you may want to look at some other types of resin like Soriatech Tenacious which you can then mix in with your ABS like and give it a little more strength to help those minis stand up even better. But for starting out, just go with the ABS like. The next step logically would be printing, but I'm gonna assume that you can use your slicer and put a file on your printer and print it because there are tons of resources out there for you to learn how to do that. And frankly, I just learned it from opening up the software and trying it out. So my step number five is gonna be cleaning and curing. And this is a very important step. You're not done once that print comes off the printer. This is where you wanna use your gloves, be safe handling that. Once you've taken your metal scraper and popped that print off of your print plate, you wanna get some isopropyl alcohol, at least 90%, and use that to wash the uncured resin off your print. So you just wanna make sure that you wash that off and then you want to actually take that isopropyl alcohol that you've used and put it in a container, maybe stick it outside in the sunlight and let the resin in it cure a little bit or something. Once you've used all that up and you can't use it anymore, you wanna make sure that you cure that resin that's in there so that you can get rid of it safely. You also want an alcohol-based glass cleaner, like Sprayway, that's what I use. It's a foaming cleaner, it's alcohol-based. It's really good at removing resin from all the surfaces that you need to clean on your printer. And I like to take some and spray it on a paper towel so that I can wipe my gloved hands on it if I do happen to get some resin on my hands while I'm cleaning things up so that I don't then put it somewhere else I don't want it. You also want to have some type of shop towel handy to clean up with, to wipe up with. And I recommend getting these paper shop towels. They're great, there's not much lint that comes off of them. They're very thick, they clean up really well. A lot of people recommend my microfiber cloths, but I just don't want to waste money because you can't really reuse them once you've used them. So I like to use the, sh the paper shop towels. I'm gonna recommend to you now something that I d actually don't have because I'm on a bit of a budget, so I DIY'd some things, but I'm gonna recommend that you get a wash and cure station. It costs a little bit more money, but it's very, very handy. You can pour some IPA in there and clean your prints when they come off the printer, and then you remove the container with the IPA and you've got a UV light and a turntable that then cures your mini for you in the machine, and it just takes a few minutes, and I think it's really worth the investment. I just haven't invested in it yet. I made my own uh, curing station with a UV light I bought online and a Home Depot bucket and some aluminum foil. It's really easy. Maybe I'll do a video on that sometime soon. And I wash in containers of IPA. I drop my minis into containers with lids and kind of stir them around a little bit to wash with the IPA. But you can get all that done faster with a wash and cure station. So that's five steps to getting started 3D printing. And I told you I have a bonus step here at the end, which I think is gonna be really helpful for you. But first, if you're getting some value out of this video, man, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button down below. And if you'd hit the battle ax to subscribe to this channel and keep up with the, all the adventures that are happening on Short Rest Studios. All right, so my bonus step number six to get started printing 3D minis is to get started printing. Again, I'm gonna let you figure out how to use your own slicer software. There's tons of resources for that. But I will tell you this, start with pre-supported models. Unless you're like an engineer or you just really wanna get into the down and dirty details of creating supports for your own models right off the bat, start with pre-supported models. And I'm gonna tell you a few of my favorites. Yasashi Kyojin Studio makes some great 
pre-supported minis. I highly recommend them. It's a small company. It's a single designer. Uh, you can find them on Patreon and you can pay them five bucks a month and get all the pre-supported minis that you could want. Check out Loot Studios. They run about $15 US a month. You get a new package each month with tons of miniatures and they're incredibly detailed and they're beautiful and I highly recommend them. You can also check out Mammoth Factory Games. They provide you with a new package of miniatures every month and an adventure, a 5e adventure to go along with it, as well as stat blocks and all those other things. And finally, you can log on to My Mini Factory where you can find tons of stuff, loads of things that I haven't tried out yet that you may absolutely love. I highly recommend you check it out. All right, adventurers, that does it for another week of Short Rest Studios. Thank you so much for joining me, and thank you right now for hitting that like button, hitting the battle axe to subscribe, and I hope that you got something out of this. I hope that you're going to join me next time for Short Rest Studios. Yasashi, okay. Yasashi Kyojin Studio.